Hey, what's up, Daniel? So let me show you these two routines that I do um, for my lower back and also for my upper back, but particularly for our lower back. So the first one here is standing up and I do it like anywhere, pretty much. Doesn't matter if I'm at the airport, grocery store, or anything like that. What I like to do first, I like to, this is more for uh, for chest and for upper back. I start off by doing this. I stretch, I do this, and from here, I come down. So here I'm stretching my lower back already, but at the same time, I'm relieving, releasing stress and tension in the upper back. While releasing tension in the chest and in the uh, shoulders, which is really good if you're doing those 100 push-ups every day. You know, this is why I do it because this area gets really sore. So then from here, I put my arms up, I reach for the sky, and I go to the side, I'm stretching all the side right here, and then I go to the other side, and then I go back. And then from here, I come down, and I reach for wherever you can, wherever you can reach, and try to get your stomach into, so it's just, it's not like, just like this. Because you see the lower back, you want the back to bend as much as possible. So it's not so much like this, it's more of getting the stomach into, into the thigh. So in other words, if you're not able to lock out your knees, you can even have them bent, grabbing onto your calves or to your ankles and coming down this way. So this way you see you're creating this, this bend here. And then from here, you can lean down or you just do it to wherever is comfortable. But the idea is you want to create no space between the body. So this way you're able to really fold your lower back. So then from here, I come up and then I like to do the same thing. A lot of times now I do a stretch here. So now I grab my elbow and now I'm just emphasizing a little more on the lats, a little more on the arms. But then from here, I now you see I go forward. So the reason right now what I'm doing is I'm stretching the side, but I'm also stretching independently this left side of my lower back. So see, first I come to the side and then once I have tension, I keep the tension on and I continue to go to the front and then all the way to this side. And then now I'm stretching this side here and then I go forward again. So this way I'm creating this tension the entire time now on the right side, all the way forward. So it's like the circular motion here. If I was to only go to side here, it would only hit the side. If I only go to the front, it would go right down the middle, but between the middle, down the middle of the back and the side, there's this whole space right here. See, between here, and here, there's this whole space. This whole area can create a lot of tension. So that's why after coming to the side, I lean forward and kind of rotate. So this is what I'm able to get between. So I do this a lot. And I grab onto the elbow because it's a little bit easier. You can technically do the same thing when you're here. Go to the side, go to the side and you can reach. So you can do this the same way, but it's a little bit harder. So I just find with elbows sometimes it's a little bit easier to kind of navigate. So that's really the routine that I do standing up and I do it all the time. So now the one I do on the ground, that's really good for back. All these little ants. So this one is really good for lower back. Take the right knee, bring it to the chest, and bring it all the way there until you feel a pinch in your hip flexor. And point your chin towards your knees. This way, it'll flatten out the spine. You see, when we have a tight lower back, it's not just the back area that's tight. It's not just here. It's the entire muscle all the way up to the neck. And so what starts off as lower back, we may feel it there, 
But then suddenly, before you know it, we may pull our neck. Suddenly our neck gets tight and suddenly our hamstrings get tight because this muscle comes all the way. It's connected. It's not multiple pieces. They're all connected together. And so when we're doing this, we're stretching this entire area. So if I show you on this side, so when I'm doing a, a knee to chest, this is a great exercise, it's so easy, it's not really tough. But when you hold it there and you really pull it and then tuck in your chin, you're stretching this whole entire area, all the way. So, so let's say, so you hold it here for roughly about, I'll say about 30 seconds or so. You wanna work even up to about a minute. And then after that, so you can put a timer. What I like to do is just put a timer, one minute timer, and um, the amount of sets, uh, I need to calculate the amount of sets, maybe at least 10. So then now you go into a spinal twist. So this now is relieving pressure in the back. You'll feel it right here. Make sure your knee touches the ground. Then you're starting to the other side. And as you're in this position, try to relax. So then you're holding each one of these, ideally for a minute, but whatever amount of time that you have to hold it is, is better than uh, doing nothing. So just whatever amount of time you have. So then from here, you switch sides, same thing, a minute here, a minute here, a minute right here. So you hold on to your elbows, put your head back, and don't do this, right? Where your chin is facing up, because now your spine behind your neck is curved. You see, so here's an exaggerated version. So if you see this, you see my spine behind my neck. When I do this and I point my chin towards my knees, my now my behind my neck, my spine is flat. And also this allows me to stretch out the muscle here behind the neck. See, if I curve it like this, I'm shortening the muscle. When I do this, I'm elongating the muscle. So now from here, you want to go and grab onto your feet. So if you can't grab onto your feet, ideally this is what you want to get to. You want to grab onto your toes, lock out your knees, and point your toes and try to get it towards your forehead. You're not going to be able to, but the idea is pull it towards your forehead. But if you can't get to your, to your toes, Maybe you can grab your your um, your caps and same idea. And try to lock out, try to lock out your knees. Even if you're kind of right here, try to lock out your knees and try to bring your feet to your forehead. Just point it towards this direction. So this way you're not like this. You see, we're not doing a plow. You're keeping your tailbone on the ground, and you're simply just bring this closer. And the point here is to lock out the knees. Locking out the knees makes this move. If you don't lock out the knees, you're not doing anything. You know, you're, you're, you're missing out on like 80% of the stretch. So locking out the knees, no matter where you're at, right? No matter where you're holding, lock out the knees. From here, you wanna grab onto the outside of your foot if you're able to reach it. If you're not able to reach it, you can grab onto your calves and you open your legs and we call this happy baby feet, right? This is what babies do all the time, right? So now you're aiming your knees towards the ground. So all of this right here is relieving the lower back. So you're on your back and you're pulling all of this. So all these areas become looser. So you're releasing the tension. And that's where the lower back pain comes from, tension. So if you're not able to grab onto the feet, you can also just grab onto the calves same idea, hold on to it and pull down. I was just showing uh, my friend's dad today where I told him just grab onto here, you know, and just pull down. So pretty much whatever you can grab onto, you can grab onto your heel, grab onto your heel. The idea is to get the knees towards the floor. From here, now this one is really good. It's a little more tougher. You hook the feet together, you put your hands between your legs from here and then now you try to touch your forehead towards your feet and just go go as far as you can you know but this one is so good because you're now still using your lower back and releasing attention 
but now you're also releasing the tension on the top behind the neck like this so after that you hold on to one leg reach for your forehead so wherever you're at if you're right here you're right here you're gonna feel you're gonna feel maybe a little strain in your neck here but this is really good for your back and it's really good to release a lot of the toxins like in your kidney so reach for it switch the other side and you'll find like over time it becomes easier of course so good after that two more moves well i'll show you the whole sequence so now this one here shoulder stance so if you've never done this before you know what you do is you just come up first and it's almost like going into a plow but from here you just keep your legs kind of bent and you just kind of focus first on getting placing your hands in this area see the reason why this is so good is not only because it starts to release it really some pressure from the back and it puts the pressure more up here but it also changes the circulation you see it changes the circulation so you to open up the circulation when you start to open up the circulation in the body the tension is released because the tension is there from blockages there's blockages in this area from the tension so this is opening up the blockages so that from here then you can straighten it out then the last thing from here is to go into the plow. So you can use your hands, elbows to support your back. First thing to do is to focus on getting the feet to touch the ground. Second thing to do is to put your feet together, knees together, and point your toes towards your head. And then the third thing is to lock out the knees. So this is so good because this stretches everything from the upper back to the middle back lower back also the hamstrings when you lock out the knees so this whole entire area is loose and then from here you go into a hip thrust so this hip thrust so before we were stretching out the back right we we're elongating it now we're compressing it together compressing it together and we're restrengthening it restrengthening it right here so that's why you're feeling your lower back here. You're feeling your glutes and hams, but particularly focus on thrusting upwards and you're feeling your back here. Next one is tabletop. Same idea, you'll feel in your shoulders a little bit, but the idea is right here, your back. And so, so that's why you don't just do this. You see how this right here is just like relaxing. You want to thrust up because the more you thrust, you're gonna feel your back. And this is helping to strengthen the back. And then you hang your neck back. And this last one here is a little tougher, is the, is the wheel. So just hold this for as long as you can. So this move right here is really good for the back because it increases the circulation but of course you know do whatever is comfortable so when you start off on this move you can always just put your hands back here feet and then you can just do this this is what i've done before when i first started i'll come up and then i'll hold it for as long as i can and I slowly come down and then i just relax now it counts maybe like five seconds ten seconds and then i come here again and then I come back up for maybe a few seconds and I slowly come back down and then I'm good you know so over time you get to hold it longer so from here last thing I like to do after that is I like to go back into a double knee to chest you know so just to go ahead and release the tension kind of stretch it back out bounce it out and that's the way to go one more thing bro so there is um, there is something called uh, Paida Lajing, and uh, it's a method of healing. And there is a one particular stretch 
that is freaking really powerful, man. And I'll show you right now. So you can, let's go over here. So we'll go right here. So this is what the move looks like. Hopefully I don't bump into this Wi-Fi. So usually you're on a chair, so I should show you maybe on a chair, but you straighten one leg out. Oh, I need to be on something elevated because I need to be on an elevated so I can hang my arms back. So because this is lengthening the entire side underneath the hamstrings into the lower back all the way, but usually I need to be elevated so I can hang my legs, like my arms back. So if I was to grab a fish like this, This is okay. It should be slightly a little bit shorter would be ideal, but I'll show it to you. Dead. So you want to go and, so you have your legs placed onto a wall or any platform. You hang your leg down, this way you can drape. So now you're stretching the hip flexors here and then you hang your arms back. Now ideally your, bet, your head should not have much support. So this way you're able to hang your body back more but this kind of shows you the idea. Doing, even doing this is really good. So at this point, you want to start off maybe doing about five minutes. This is like one of those like one moves. It's like doing a burpee. You know, it's where you're getting your squats and your, your push-ups and working your core and everything. This one move is so good for releasing tension and the entire body, including the lower back. Because lower back is one of the most popular areas to hold tension at. And it's because of stretching the whole entire, the whole entire backside of the body. So you just hold this move. You just kind of, you can close your eyes and you can just connect your body and almost like go into kind of like meditation. Set a timer, you know, so for maybe five minutes and then afterwards you can go ahead and switch. So now you just switch legs, one leg up, other leg come down, and the same idea. So this one is really powerful, so simple, but really, really effective. The point here is to keep your knees locked here. So you don't want to do this, you know, because then you're losing out on the stretch here. You want to keep your knees locked. So sometimes if you have to, you may, you may need to do this, kind of like hold your knee, you know, and then just let your arms hang and let your, your head hang. So this way you're able to stretch it all out. So these are both practices I do all the time. That one standing one, I do it like every day, all the time. The uh, laying down one, you know, I do that. I do that probably about maybe a couple times a week, you know, cause I'm doing my morning flow. So it covers a lot of the stuff, but that practice is really good. And there are many times throughout the last few years, you know, to where my back will get really, really tight. One was like really recently. And doing that, that uh, those combinations, you know, really release the tension, the lower back, and the entire back, and then you just feel great afterwards. So, hope it helps, brother. See ya.